with me, Justin Castillo. I need the quarter. Ah! Hey, how's it going? Justin Castillo here with Redis University. We're going to go over a couple different things today. So I'm going to break this video into different sections. Hopefully that will help you as you go along. First, we're going to go to RedisLabs.com and sign up for a Redis Cloud account. We'll be able to access this instance of a Redis database uh, basically anywhere, as long as we have an endpoint, a port number, and the password. We're going to connect a GUI a Redis GUI to our Redis Cloud account. We're going to actually be able to see the keys and values and check out some cool metrics and bars and graphs and charts uh, to sort of see how our database is doing. And then lastly, we're going to use Docker to install Redis. Well, I'm sorry. We're going to use Docker to run a Redis container to actually connect to our Redis Cloud instance so we can actually interact with our database locally on our laptop. So basically, all the database is going to be in cloud, which is really cool. And it's not going to be on our desktop. So we can actually interact with this database with other people while we're developing or you know what have you. There's tons of different instances when you actually want to have the database not on your local laptop. You can also have more than 30 megabytes. Uh, that's what we're going to be signing up for. But uh, those are paid options. So you'll definitely want to do that as you go along with your development. OK, cool. So let's start. I am at RedisLabs.com. Uh, you just go to this Try Free button because we're going to try free. And then enter your name and then your email address, justin.castia at redislabs.com. And then enter your company or whatever you want. Um, and then your phone number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So I'm not going to give you my phone number. I am in the United States. I am in beautiful, sunny California. And then here's my password. Don't look at it and then sign up for that. OK, cool. So they're going to send me an email to validate, and then I'll be up and running. OK, so I validated my email by clicking on the link within the email message, and it brings me to the screen, create your subscription. So I'll click on that. All right, so now you can host your database on three different services, AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure. Uh, I'll stick with AWS because it's already there. You can select your region. So I'm going to be, uh, let's do US West 1. Um, now, I don't really care about replication right now just because I'm going to be doing a really quick uh, demonstration. So I'm going to choose the data set of 30 megabytes because that's free and I love free. Uh, subscription name, what do I want to call this? Let's call this head in the corner dash example. This can be whatever you want. All right, database name. How about head and a quarter dash hello? Okay, protocol, we're going to be using Redis. Uh, replication is disabled for this instance. There's no data persistence. Access control and security is on, basically, which means they give me a password. Now, this is a randomly generated password that I will use to connect to my Redis instance. Now, I'm going to show this to you, and I don't care if I'm showing this to you because I'm going to change it as soon as uh, this video is over. But I want to copy this um, onto um, other services so I can actually gain access to Redis. Now, we can choose our data eviction policy. Uh, volatile LRU is the standard, so it removes all of the expiry um, set uh, entries before any of the other ones and uses the least recently used. So if we start hitting that memory limit of 30 megabytes, it's going to get rid of any of the um, keys that actually have an expiry set to it. And you can use anything you want. So you can use all keys, LRU, volatile LRU, uh, TTL, based off of like the sooner that they have time to live, they're going to get killed or removed. Or you can have no eviction if you want to live dangerously. So uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. I'm just going to stick to volatile LRU. Um, this is a really cool setting, modules. So you can actually try all the different modules that Redis Labs has. So we have Redis Graph, Redis Time Series, Redis JSON, Redis Bloom, Redis Search 2. So we've covered a lot of these in a couple different videos. So Andrew loves Redis Search. I know Guy has been using Redis Bloom, and he's also talked about Redis Graph in a couple talks. I love Redis JSON. I have a video in our explainer series covering Redis JSON and Redis Time Series. We'll talk about that later. So I'm going to choose Redis JSON, and I like that I'm going to get alert settings if I hit my limit. I'm not going to change that. And I'll just click Activate. All right, so it's bringing me to the screen. Uh, right here, you can see that it's spooling up my database in the cloud. 
and soon uh, my endpoint will be populated. So that's going to give me a specific endpoint to my database, as well as a port number that I'll have to connect to. And then we'll feed that into Redis Insight, and I'll be, I'll be able to connect to the GUI, and I'll start seeing within my database uh, what's going on. So if there's like any keys, any accesses or connections, I'll be able to track that. Or if I'm using my CLI, I'll be able to connect to it and use it just like a normal terminal. All right, so here's my endpoint. Here's my port number. And then again, here's my uh, password. So let me turn on Redis Insight. And this will start a web server, and I'll open up a page in my browser. OK, so Redis Insight brought me to this page. Um, connect to your Redis database. I don't have a Redis database, or I already have a database. So I click on this one and connect to your Redis database. That's me using a host name and port. And so now I just enter this information. Give me one second while I copy it all over. OK. Through the magic of video editing, here is the host, here is the port number, and here's my secret password that was passed to me uh, from Redis Labs free trial. And then this is the name of my uh, database, hitc-hello, and then username is default. I just want to keep that as default. Add Redis database, and there we go. Here is my database. So now I can see how many commands are run through it per second, how many connected clients we have, uh, memory allocation, all sorts of cool stuff. You see on the left here, all sorts of neat tabs to press. So browser, I can actually look at the keys. So I don't have any keys in here because I have a fresh, clean browser. Um, here, uh, sorry, fresh, clean database. Uh, here's a command line interface built into Redis Insight. So I can do my basic test, ping pong. So let's do set foo bar. And just like a normal Redis CLI, it, it just set foo to the value bar. So I can go to my browser. Here's my list of keys. Here's foo. And then I can inspect the value bar. There we go. Um, and I can also run JSON commands because I actually requested Redis JSON as a module. So this is, you could use this as you know, a, a command station for uh, your, uh, your basic growing Redis instance, which is really cool. Cool. All right, so now let's go over and check out how to connect to this using the actual terminal command line. So I'm going to go here. And I have a fresh browser, and I want to call docker run p 6379 colon 6379. OK, so now we want to actually run a Docker container of Redis JSON. So we'll be able to have those commands that communicate with the Redis Cloud instance that has the Redis JSON module installed. So that's not going to be hard. It's just going to be a specific container that we'll want from Redis Labs. So to do that, we'll just do docker run dash p 6379 colon 6379 dash d dash dash name Redis dash JSON. And then we're going to be asking for this container from Redis Labs colon. No, I'm sorry. Redis Labs slash Redis JSON or rejson colon latest. Cool. So it's not able to find it locally, so it's just going to pull it down from Docker Hub. And there we go. There's our image ID. So now I'm going to call docker exec dash it redis dash json, which is the name of our database instance container. And then I'm going to call sh. Now this is going to give me a shell input into the Docker container. And I'm just going to call redis dash cli. And then I'm going to give the host, which is this long string here. And then the port number, sorry, the port number, which is 10226, I believe. All right, cool. So let me just call ping. Oh, no, we have a no auth authentication required. Remember, we need an, uh, to authenticate ourselves with a password because safety first. So let's just copy this password. And then I'll call auth. And then there's the password. OK, so let's try it again. Ping, eh? pong. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let me make sure that I am on the right database. We had foo. So with foo, we get bar. Nice. Now let's set a JSON object. We'll call JSON dot uh, set and then user one dot and then the string for JSON. 
Okay, cool. So let's do json.get just to make sure. Let's call user1. There's our JSON object. And just to be thorough, let's go to Redis Insight and let's look at the browser. And there we go. We can see user1 within Redis Insight. And there's our JSON object. Cool. That's really awesome. So hopefully this was a uh, quick and easy way to connect to Redis Cloud with Redis Insight and a Docker container. So what have we installed onto your laptop? Well, nothing really. A quick web server from Redis Insight to actually connect to the Redis Insight GUI. But again, you don't need the GUI. You can just use a Docker container to connect to Redis CLI. But Redis Insight gives you a really great insight into all the different metrics. So you can see usage, connections, patterns, things like that, which are really, really helpful when you're getting to know and run around your Redis instance. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Remember to subscribe to our videos. We really like sharing these with you. And if you ever want to see anything, let us know. All right. Talk to you later.